top of that, what, what they do as men outside of the game is fo football. But, I mean, this is uh, – if you, if you wanted to study how to play quarterback, then you need to watch that game Sunday night. Or what's the key to Aaron Rodgers and the Packers upsetting Tom Brady and the Patriots? Understanding exactly what their recipe is, right? They're going to defer, get the ball, and they, they, what they try and do, they try and score right before the half, come out before the half, go up by two possessions, and then make you one-dimensional. I mean, the uh, Green Bay is one-dimensional anyway, but they, they really make you one-dimensional, make you have to throw the ball. The problem that the Patriots are going to have are the fact that they really don't have a pass rusher. And if you can't put pressure on Aaron Rodgers, he's going to, he's going to uh, eat you alive. It may they come down to who has the ball less, who has the ball last. Mm -hmm. What I like about Green Bay, they came out and they got in the faces of the Rams last week, but they have the one player that maybe can can, can present some pressure on the quarterback in Clay Matthews, and I don't see that same player on the other side when I look at the Patriots, somebody that can get pressure on the quarterback. They can disrupt, and Pettin's played against Brady a, a hundred times, you know, being with the, the Jets, you know, and also being a member, you know, being a defense coordinator for the Buffalo Bills. So he understands what some of the rules and some of the tales are. We all have little secrets in our little notebook, and we have a couple on Tom Brady, and I know he's going to use them. He's going to get Tom Brady off his spot, understanding that he can't throw on the run accurately. The other guy on the other sideline is better outside throwing the ball on the move. Yeah, I did like the intensity for which Green Bay did go after the Rams. Now, if they're going to be able to take that from the West Coast, be able to package that back to Green Bay, put it back on a plane, yeah. and be able to bring it to Gillette, that's going to be the big question in this game. Interior-wise, can guys like Kenny Clark, can they affect Brady to be able to get him yeah. off the spot and to be able to do it Early in the game, you can't let Tom Brady get comfortable. Right. Typically, that first quarter, if you if you when you beat Tom Brady, that first quarter goes really, really rough for him. How many times can you get him on the seat of his pants? Not necessarily sack him, but how many times can you contact him to make the game difficult? That is the pressure on Green Bay for Aaron Rodgers. He he knows he's got to build the score points. Even last week, he can't rely on getting the ball back with the kick return. He's got to be able to get touchdown. There were some opportunities early. In the game that they did not take advantage of, and I'm sure Aaron is trying to get off to a blazing hot start to try to put Tom Brady and the Pats under pressure there at home where they are almost unbeatable. Listen, I if Sony Michelle does not play, and he didn't play last week, he's been living mm -hmm. in practice all week, I think this game skews to advantage Packers. I understand it's in Gillette. I understand yeah. that uh, the pa Pats have won five in a row. I, I get it. But the Patriots' offense this year, when they haven't had a consistent running game, has been mediocre. The pa or, uh, mediocre That's by true. their standards. They, yeah. they haven't broken 30 points yeah. once without the consistent running game. The one time they did it without the consistent running game, they had two special teams touchdowns. So as far as their offense putting up multiple touchdowns, it's been very difficult when it's just been on Tom Brady's arm. Additionally, the Packers, I don't like that they got rid of HaHa -Ha Clinton Dix, but they have a stud rookie corner in Jair Alexander, Absolutely. who's going to be playing on the outside. Whether that's Hogan or Gordon, whomever that is, they will not ever have to worry about doubling him. Mm -hmm. They can let him. They were leaving Jair Alexander one on one on Brandon Cooks last week, yeah. and he did a good job there. So if Gronk, even if Gronk plays, he was out of practice yesterday. He's going to be limited. We know that it almost feels to me like because he hasn't been fully healthy all year that they have been saving Gronk for a couple big plays late. We've seen this in a few of the Patriots wins against the Chiefs. They did it last week. They did it. It's like all right, we don't know how. How many times Gronk can really, we can get the engine up to 90. We're, it seems like they're being cautious with him because of his health. If they also don't have Sony Michelle, they're limited on options outside of Julian Edelman. What, what about Belichick's approach then? You talk about the Packers well, well, and how they attend. Do, does Belichick's approach change at all or what they do given well, this, these circumstances? Well, this is a familiar chess match between Petten and, and, and Belichick and McDaniels. Oh. They've done this over and over again. He understands exactly what he's going to get. And he understands uh, that he's probably going to see the Spartan package. And what's the Spartan package? The Spartan package is a package where Petten you know, comes out with a lot of defensive backs, a lot of safeties, a lot of corners. And what he does is he baits you to run the ball. That's why Sony Michelle is so important because mm -hmm. what he's going to say is if Brady's handing it off, he ain't throwing it. And if he ain't throwing it, he can't beat us. He, they'll make them you know, have 120, 200 yards rushing. But as long as he's not airing that thing out, I'm fine with that. No explosive plays, no big plays over 20. So with that being said, he's going to make Sony Michelle or whoever's there at running back you know, rush the ball 20, 30 times and see if they can be patient, understanding that he's never had a quarterback on the other side that can put pressure back on Brady so that when he gets out there, he has 
has to score. Sarah, typically in these games, and going back to especially the Peyton Manning games, when Peyton Manning faced Tom Brady, Belichick was a different coach. That In those games, you could see he was not very conservative. He was very, very aggressive. They would also run more trick plays. They're going to go for it on fourth down more. They're going to run more trick plays, and they're going to be aggressive in their overall approach, knowing that the other guy, and that being Aaron Rodgers, compared to Peyton Manning, we don't want to give him the ball. So their overall approach as a team going into these games, it's very, very different than the normal New England approach where they say we're going to defer, we're going to give you the football, we're going to sit back, try to figure out what you're doing, and try to put you in checkmate later in the fourth quarter. No, they're going to be very, very aggressive because of his respect, and he said that in the press conference when he spoke about Aaron Rodgers. All right, you didn't tell me to write that down, but I did write down Spartan Packers. Spartan now, that's Packers. interesting because you know what it re reminded me of? The opposite of the way people have played Dallas this year. Dallas this year, they have basically said, you got to throw it. What are you thinking? Yeah. We got no, we got single high safety. Everyone's one-on-one. Yeah. -on -one. Mm -hmm. we, we want you to throw it, so we're going to give you a defensive look where you'd feel foolish if you don't. Now, against the Patriots, that could be particularly effective just in this regard. Brady has made a, shouldn't say he's made a, a career of, but part of his greatness has been always having no ego to the position. If it is a front where I'm supposed to run, yes. I will check into a run. Right. Mm -hmm. If you have light, if you have small people out there, I will trust my big yeah. people to run over you, which mm -hmm. is why we've seen games where the Pats run the ball 35, yeah. 38 times, yeah. even if we don't know that they have great running, if, if, if they have a great running back. So that's a really interesting. They're going to they're gonna play him in two man, right? And he, they're going to make Brady have have to throw in the tight windows, and yep. what happens is he starts to hear ghosts because he has that eternal clock. He knows that he has somebody that has respect on the edge, and Clay Matthews, somebody that can get to him eventually, and he starts seeing ghosts. We use that um, in the AFC Championship, well, not the cha divisional championship or the divisional Visual playoff round. game, the divisional round, to really confuse him because now you can have complex you know, coverages, all those motions and things like that. Now you have a defensive, defensive back talking to a defensive back opposed to a defensive back talking to a linebacker. You can't pass certain routes, certain Certain route combinations, rub routes, combinations, and, pick routes, and all those things. And the best way, you taught me this, see, the best way to get a team out of playing two man is to have the quarterback run. Yes. And Brady ain't never gonna run. Right. Twice so a year. It's in his contract. <laughs> Twice, <laughs> Twice a year. Bart, stacked NFC North for the Packers, especially given the way the game ended last week. Yes. What's the sense of desperation? How how do you expect them to be feeling coming into this one? Well, I, th I think they understand the, the, the sense of urgency to, to, to stay pace with Minnesota. I don't think they really see Chicago as a legitimate threat. They have a lot of mm -hmm. flaws, mainly their quarterback. They understand that Kirk Cousins can carry a football team. You know, Thielen's, you know, out yeah. of his mind yeah. right now and Diggs and everybody, they're playing well. Well, but I think they feel that, you know, if they just stay, to, stay the course, continue to get healthier and healthier. I think they made those moves because they have the respect for a lot, for um, Zaire, for Josh Jackson, for a lot of those guys back there understanding that they can get something in return. They realize also that the Saints are 6-1. So everyone talked about the Rams. The Rams 8-0. Yeah. All right, them first two slots right now. So now you want to go on the road? You want to be a wild card? I don't believe they want to be a wild card. So I believe a sense of urgency kicks in. And I believe that in this game, they try to get their season turned around. All right, Bart, we're going to see you a little bit later in the show. Don't go anywhere. Coming up, though, is there anything Baker Mayfield can do to keep up with Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs? That's next.